Our theme this month is prayer. And my topic today is prayer is a movement in consciousness. It's a movement in consciousness. And newsflash, we're the ones moving. <laughs> in prayer, we're the ones that are moving. I'm not even going to attempt to define prayer, because you can't. <laughs> you, you, you can't take infinite concepts and put them in finite terms. So I can't tell you. I, I can't tell you what love is. Nobody can tell you what it is. We, I can't tell you what life is, what art is, what truth is. We, but we know what it looks like. Okay, we can describe it. We know when love is present. We know when it's flourishing. Yes? We, we know when there's justice, and we can feel when there's not. We can feel beauty. We can feel trust, but we can't define it. Are, are you with me? And I would say give up trying to define it. Get up, tr give up trying to put stuff in a little box. You can't define God. It's too big. This stuff is too big to put in a box. Because when we try to define it, we're busy trying to distinguish it to figure out what it is versus what it's not. Are, are you with me? The more we try to define, the smaller it gets. When we need to do the opposite. When it comes to spirituality, instead of making it smaller, make it bigger. Make it even more expansive than anything that you could have possibly imagined. Don't try to narrow love down to just this little bitty thing that you can articulate with your lips. Because if you can articulate with your lips, you're going to miss it. Joy, peace, power, trust, beauty, love, fulfillment, all of these things are going to take you beyond a linguistic capacity to explain that our words are like fingers pointing towards the moon, like the Buddhists say. Don't get stuck on the finger. Don't get stuck on the finger. There's something that's transcendent of that. When I'm speaking of prayer, I am speaking of a movement in consciousness. Prayer is an activity that is taking place, and don't relegate it to just specific moments in time. We can have prayer practices, but prayer doesn't stop and start with a clock. See, you can have loving practice, but love doesn't stop and start with a clock. You can't say, well, now I'm loving for these five minutes, and, like, and then I'm not. It doesn't work that way. See? Consciousness is always moving. We can do practices that strengthen us. We can do practices that help us to create some discipline. But when you think of prayer, and when I think of prayer, I'm thinking of it more like a praying spirit, a focus of attention and awareness, where prayer is this movement in consciousness that's contemplative. We often think of contemplative as being quiet and serene. But when I say contemplative, what I am saying is that there's always something going on in the backdrop of your mind. No matter what you're saying, no matter what you're doing, no matter what you're thinking, there's something else that you're contemplating. 
It's like you could be on your job, doing your job, but you're contemplating your bills. Okay? You, you, you can be listening to somebody and having a conversation, but you're contemplating the argument that you had last night. You get what I'm saying? There, there, there's something that has the backdrop of our awareness that is pretty consistent. It keep, it's like a loop that keeps running and running and running and running and running. So part of our problem is that we are asking faulty questions that keep us contemplating negativity. We're asking faulty questions like, what's wrong with me? What's wrong with this one? When is this thing going to be over? Why is that happening? What's going on now? Blah, blah, blah. So that's the backdrop of our mind. C can you feel me? So then that's what you're always having your, your it's, it's beyond your attention, your subjective mind is constantly processing all of this stuff. Why this? Why this? Why is this going on? But, so you get into this downward spiral. And what prayer does is it opens us up. Prayer recalibrates us so that that back drop of our awareness gets elevated a few notches. So instead of the, why is this happening? We start opening up to possibility, why can't something happen? Okay. And instead of always looking for what's wrong, we start affirming what's right. Instead of thinking that we're stuck, we start opening up to the idea, maybe there are other ways. Are you with me? Can you feel how that shifts everything when you start to do that? The affirmations for today, I'm going to share them again so that the people who are on Facebook and YouTube and whatnot, they can hear it too. You have it in your programs if you're in the room. Take it with you. Take it with you. And just as an aside, for those of you who are regulars here, Every set of affirmations every week is exactly 100 words. Every one of them is exactly 100 words. It's this little covenant thing that's going on with Spirit and me about this, and I'll share how that came to be, but exactly. It says prayer is a movement in consciousness opening my time-blinded eye. Okay. So, so remember, I'm not trying to define prayer. We're looking at what does it do? What is its presence? Like, do, we don't know what joy is. But what does joy do when joy is in my life? How is it different? So instead of like chasing this elusive thing, joy, wh when I realize, well, you know, when joy is there, I have more gratitude. Okay. So joy may be missing my mind, but I know what gratitude is. Let me start working on that. Do you feel the difference? Let, 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 let me start working on that. If joy is connected to this gratitude, let me start contemplating that, and that'll help me move towards that joy. So, so, so these are the things that, that prayer does. It says, prayer elevates my sight, cleanses my heart, and strengthens my courage. Isn't that beautiful? If prayer didn't do anything else than that, it'd be worth it. <laughs> Elevates my sight. So, so I'm not stuck on just what's in front of me. I can get a broader view. I can get a higher view. I can see more. Cleanses my heart. 
and strengthen my courage. It says prayer recalibrates my energy. I use that term frequently because I think it's the heart of the matter for us on this spiritual journey. When you recalibrate, you're shifting the vibration and you're shifting the frequency. It's almost like when you see a guitarist and, and a guitarist is always tuning their guitar. They're recalibrating the guitar. They're recalibrating its pitch. And when are they doing it? All the time. Are you with me? Even while they're performing, they realize that the stress and the strain of pulling on those strings is going to knock it out of tune. We have to constantly be retuning ourselves. See, the guitarist knows there's certain pitch that every string is supposed to be. Well, it's like that with our lives. We got to step away from the madness long enough sometimes to hear the pitch to hear the frequency, that's our spiritual frequency. Not our Facebook frequency, not our credit score frequency, you know, not our relationship frequency, but something that's transcendent of that. And we want all of the world and everything to change and to adjust to us. It's the other way around. We've got to adjust. Music's not going to adjust its pitch to your guitar string. But that's what we're asking the world to do all the time. That's what we're asking, you know, hey, God, can you, like, tune it down a few notches and let the world be flat? Or I know I'm a little sharp, but can't you make everything accommodate my sharpness? <laughs> like, no, we recalibrate our energy. It says prayer redirects my power towards the positive. There is a redirect. There's a show, I haven't seen it lately, but I really like the show. It's called The Dog Whisperer with Cesar Milan. And he says, I train people <laughs> and rehabilitate dogs. <laughs> and it, it just amazes me how the dog's behavior is always vibing somehow off of the human beings. And they've got to shift. And he'll train the human beings. And there's this, there was this one little thing, a redirect, where he would teach the, 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 the dog owners, notice your dog. Okay? Notice whatever. Notice when its ears start to go up or certain something happens with his tail, and he says, just tap him. Just, like, break him out of that. And he comes back around. You know, we, we do that with kids. You see him kind of going over there to that flame. You see him coming over there. It's like, whoop, come back over here. Are you with me? That's how we have to do. You veer in the direction of your attention. You veer in the direction of your attention. Okay, so we're in California, we drive a lot. 
if you're looking at something on the side of the road, guess what? <laughs> you start going in that direction, yes? So just think of the implications of that. What has your attention? And whatever has your attention, you are slowly moving towards. Whether you recognize it or not. And being in a prayerful state is a way of like redirecting our attention. Like, oh, oh, I'm starting to be a little nasty now. Oh, I'm starting to get into fear. Oh, I'm starting to get into worry. Oh, I'm starting to get into impatience. Oh, I'm starting to just boop, redirect. It's like letting, letting you hit yourself. Boom. Shift your attention. Shift your attention. Start, boom, like going in a different direction. It says, no longer fixated on facts, I see wholeness and possibility. Prayer frees me from the tyranny of my fears. No longer fixated on facts. What is it to fixate? We get riveted on it. We get stuck, so to speak. What you hear me say all the time, we misunderstand stuck. Stuck is not a lack of motion. Stuck is repetitive motion. Stuck isn't no motion. Stuck's the same motion over and over and over and over and over again. Okay. Nothing stands still. Everything in the universe is moving. Everything from the solar system to the cells in your body, everything is moving. Okay. So when it feels like you're having the same thing happening to you, it isn't because you're stuck. I want you to feel that. It isn't because you've stagnated. It's because you keep repeating where you are. And at any moment of any day, we can set something new. Isn't that amazing? At any moment, we can set something new with a redirect, but we can't stay fixated on the facts. It says, prayer, li prayer liberates me from the tyranny of my own fears. What does it mean when something's tyrannical? It, it's like it's lording over us. We get to the point sometimes where we are so fixated on the facts that the we're, the fear is running away with us. It isn't even like we have fear. It's like fear has us. And I like that way that fear says, false evidence appearing real. False evidence appearing real. And you say, well, but that is the fact. I'm looking at the cutoff notice. Okay, that's not fake news, Reverend D. That's not fake news. The fake news is your narrative about it. That's what's fake. The fake news is what does that cutoff notice say about you? About who you are. About where you've been about what your possibilities are. See, we, we get these facts in our minds, and then we start creating scenarios. We start coming up with all these stories that reinforce the fact. So that's how we get stuck. We don't get stuck because the same thing we're, it hasn't changed. We get stuck because we keep reinforcing it. We keep coming up with more and more evidence to reinforce the bad news that we don't want anyway.
It says, doubt dissolves and truth triumphs. I cease manufacturing projections and expectations. You don't know the future. It's a blank. We are creating our future. Newsflash, you're creating your past. Your past isn't just what's happened, it's the narrative that you have about your past. So one of the exercises that we do in our classes, I call it the pivot moment. Because if you look at your life, what you will find is that all of those hard times came with a gift. That part of the reason why you are who you are today is because you overcame all these different circumstances and conditions, yes? yes? Did we want to be in them? No. But who we became as a result of coming out on the other side is priceless. But we get to determine whether that past stuff was just awful victimization. We get to choose whether we were stepped on or whether that was a stepping stone. That's our choice. I, I, I'm getting this image now of this, uh, of this joke, this story about this, this, this mule that falls over into the well, and they can't figure out how they're going to get the mule out. And they can see that, you know, if this goes on, this mule's going to die. So these folks just figure out, well, it'll be cruel to just let him starve to death. So they decide they're going to bury this mule, and they just keep putting dirt, and they keep putting dirt, and they keep putting dirt. And eventually, the mule walks out. Because <laughs> every time they threw in some dirt, he shook it off and stepped on it. <laughs> Such is life. Every time people shoveling stuff on you, shake it off, step on it, and go up a little higher. Get out the ditch. Get out the well. We can't bury you. Just shake it off and step on it. It says, releasing attachments to my way, prayer shows me another way. Aligning with divine design, I am fertile ground for right action. Through prayer, I can see what can be. Anchoring in prayer, I stay grounded, centered, and connected. Releasing my attachments to the way that I think it's going to be. Don't believe everything you think. Don't believe everything you think. See, when you pray, that's your willingness to see differently. Listen to what I'm saying. Prayer is about, and you say, well, I don't know how to wait. I don't know how to pray. I don't care if you know or don't know. All I'm asking you do is to have a willingness. The willingness is the prayer. The willingness is the prayer. <laughs> like, are you willing to do that? Okay. Are you willing to claim it? You don't have to know how it's going to happen. Okay. So I grew up fundamentalist, evangelical, charismatic Pentecostal. And we were deeply entrenched in the Bible. You know, and we learned the Lord's Prayer, which you find in the book of Matthew chapter 6. The Lord's Prayer part of the Sermon on the Mount. And in this prayer, it's saying what I'm talking about. There's a movement in 
consciousness from lack and limitation to an openness. And it's a collective prayer. It's not a me and mine prayer. It's an all of us prayer. C can you imagine that? It's this our Father. Now just imagine right now if you didn't pray anything else but that ever. So that when you thought about anybody, when you thought about any problem, when you thought about it, you thought about it from the standpoint of oneness. Our family, our nation, our community, our, you feel the shift in that already? Away from the individual desperation, what's happening to me, what's going on? Our, where every time that you are expecting something for yourself, you are equally expecting it for everybody else. When Jesus was talking about priorities in this Sermon on the Mount, he said, seek first the kingdom of God and all of its righteousness, which is really justice. This kingdom of God would be the way that life would be on earth if we remembered that we were spiritual beings. That if you sought that first and all of the justice, then all the stuff would be added. Seek first the kingdom of God and all things will be added. The way we pray is, God, bring me all the things. And once we have all of the things, maybe, maybe we'll have some time to worry about justice. Or what this world should look like in divine order. But bring me the stuff first. No, no, it's a movement in consciousness. Even when it's praying for forgiveness, there's an acknowledgement in there that in order for me to receive the forgiveness, I've got to give it. Forgive us our debts, our trespasses, as we do the forgiving of those who've done it against us. This clear kind of sense of a reciprocity that's here. Right? It's a matter of the heart. It's a matter of our minds. We don't have to get stuck in the wherewithal. And I'm not saying anything against rituals. I'm not saying anything against that. But I'm having a vague recollection now of a conversation I had years ago. This had to be like in the mid-80s or something like that, when I was still living in Los Angeles. Um, and a client saw me as a practitioner, spiritual counseling. And she was taking the classes at that time. I believe she was at Agape, where I was. And she was learning how to do a spiritual mind treatment, and she was learning these different things. But it wasn't feeling right to her. And she was feeling like she was losing some of like her juju. And, and I finally asked her, I said, so what I'm hearing you tell me is that when you pray the way you pray, when you pray our Father and all the, you get good results. But when you're praying these other kinds of affirmative prayer ways, you don't get good results? And she said, yes. I said, then baby, pray your way. <laughs> you pray your way. I said, for the sake of the class, you know, learn the methodologies. I think we should always be like multilingual, so to speak, so you learn how to meet people in different kinds of ways. But you've got to find what helps you connect. Are you with me? Some people really find it in the silence. Some people find it in the movement. 
You know, you might have some practices where you just sit there and you're meditating days on end. You might have some other traditions where you're in dance trance. You dance and dance and dance and dance. You are astral projecting someplace else. You know, for, for, for somebody, it might be in music. For somebody, it might be in, in, in gardening. And somebody, it might be in, in loving and, and holding the children and, and caring for them. There's some place that each of us goes where time stands still. There's some place that each of us goes where we're not contemplating what's wrong anymore. And wherever that place is, go there and start your prayers there. Like, wh wh whatever that is, you go there. You anchor there. And then you start opening up to your possibilities from there. But it's you who's moving. The answers are always there. Notice those moments of the big epiphany. What strikes you the most is it was underneath your nose all the time. Isn't that what strikes you? Like, where was I? How did I miss this? Or, God, I'm so glad that I can see through these new eyes now. It's all here. Everything that you could ever want is already here. Will you recalibrate to see it? Will you change the narrative that allows you to align with it? Don't, don't think that your prayers are trying to move some distant deity to give you more. We've already been given everything. Just what is it going to take for us to see it? Let's breathe that in. Mm. I am so grateful in this moment. Without prayer, I don't know where I would be. I don't think a lot. So in this moment right now, I express the deepest deepest, deepest gratitude. For the awesomeness of the divine. That whatever that is that's, that's smart enough to, to hang with the stars and the moon, that's, that's smart enough to create life, to restore and, and to regenerate that controls everything. If it had been on me to remember to breathe, I wouldn't have lasted through my own sermon. We say thank you in this moment. As the psalmist said, if we had 10,000 tongues, it wouldn't be enough. So my prayer is, is my commitment in this moment. Our prayer is our collective commitment in this moment. Holy Spirit, open our eyes. 
We take off the armor, the heart and husk. We take off the helmets. We take off all the shades and the goggles and all the tints on our glasses. Naked, naked, we come. Unencumbered, free. Just as we are, we come. Use us. All the hurts, the pains, the joys, we laid at the altar for the alchemy of the divine, transforming, transmuted. We don't know. We don't know. But I have trust and faith that just because we don't know doesn't mean it's not known. Guide our steps. Guide our steps. We're willing to redirect. Anything and everything that contradicts the fundamental harmony of life doesn't belong to us. We don't claim it as so. We're free. We're free. We're free from addictions. We're free from compulsive behaviors. We're free from distractions. We're free from judgment. From lack, from limitation, we're free. We're free from resentments and guilt and shame. We're free. We're free from the tyranny of our own timetable. We're free from our own if I woulda, coulda, shouldas. We're free from our own expectations. And their ensuing disappointments were free. And in this freedom, we are available. Use us. Make of our lives a blessing this day. Oh, we pray a prayer of enoughness, of sufficiency. We don't have to know where it's going to come from. Where is it going to come? It's going to come from wherever it is. Because everything is circulating. And we claim our fair share of it now. Not at the expense of anybody else. Just like the air, there's enough for everybody to breathe. There's enough joy to go around. There's more, enough love to go around. There's enough sustenance to go around. Thank you, God. Thank you for coming through as healing of the body temple against all doctors' odds and predictions. Thank you for healing our financial bodies, freeing us up with, with, with sustenance and sufficiency. Thank you for, for, for opening up our relationships and our hearts. Thank you. Thank you. So that we can love so that we can connect and, 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 and communicate, so that we can begin again. Bless this spiritual community and all the work that we do in everything. I'm calling in this moment that just like each and every one of our lives, that God, if you put it on our heart, every divine idea comes with its own supply. If you put it on our heart to do, it's ours to do. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for our new home. Thank you. Thank you for this evolution of consciousness. Thank you for these opportunities to heal individually and collectively. God bless us all. As we drop off the old skins that are worn out. 
Let us shine for the divine. Oh, it's good. It's really, really good. As Emerson said, we get our bloated no thingness out of the whack of the divine circuits. It is good, it is done. Into thy hands we commit our spirit. We allow that which already is to simply be. And so it is.